This video covers how to create a component using a parametric array. Uh, typical uh, reasons you would want to use that are for a ladder component, um, where when you stretch the length of the ladder, ladder the rungs uh, multiply up with it, or creating a truss component. Um, and as you uh, increase the length of the truss, the uh, web uh, repeats uh, along the length of the truss as well. Uh, video the example will be uh, we'll just create a basic ladder that's about the basic the most basic uh, parametric array component you can create but before I start I should review uh, how an array works typically uh, if you're in a project and say you have a line or a detail you want to copy uh, for example I'll just a little line here you can copy it up using the copy tool or use the array tool which will create multiple copies. So if I click array in the ribbon, it gives me a couple options. Um, the number of items that gets copied, that's pretty straightforward. I'll change it to 10 and 10 copies will go up. Um, and then also uh, group and associate. Normally um, I like to leave group and associate off because it's kind of annoying. But when making a parametric array, it's important to keep that on. And the reason is as I create this array, I'll click and copy it up you'll see that it keeps it grouped together. And the reason that this is an advantage is by keeping them grouped together, it, it remembers how many copies are in this group. And when you select the group, you'll see this little construction dimension with an integer, um, 10, representing the 10 copies of the, um, of the lines. And by clicking on it, you can change the value, and that changes how many copies appear. Um, that's the key to creating a parametric array in a component. Uh, basically what you're going to do is you're going to link a parameter to that value um, so that it knows how many copies it needs to make. So I'll um, delete these out of the project real quick. And for uh, this example, we're going to make a ladder. And I've already started out making the ladder um, with just simple extrusions to represent uh, the sides of the ladder. If I go to a 3D view, you can see um, I've got the sides going on. And uh, if you need to review how to create uh, simple components and simple extrusions, uh, check out my basic components video for that. For parametric arrays, um, what you really need to do, uh, if I want the rungs of the ladder to repeat as an array, um, you need to create the rungs as their own separate model, their own separate component, and then um, load it into this component. So I have uh, the ladder started out here, and I've given it a height and an associated parameter with it, and then I've given it a width. And you can see I'm, I've equally spaced it so that that center line stays center. And then switching over to my rung model, um, I've created just a basic rung that's going to be loaded into my ladder component. Uh, if I go to the 3D view, you see this is just a simple extrusion, um, and it's it's got a width associated with it. And it's also important to keep a center line. Uh, you, you need to keep a center line to these for these objects that are going to be repeated. Um, and it's equally spaced, so if the width changes, that center line always stays true. So once you've started your family, uh, in this case, a ladder with the sides of the ladder, um, and you've created the item you want to be repeated as a separate model, in this case the rungs, then it's time to load that into the component. Uh, to create your component using a parametric array. To do that, um, starting with the thing uh, you want to repeat, load it into your family by going to the ribbon and choose load into project. Once you do, uh, I can say I can choose the test ladder family uh, to load it in. And I'll click OK. Now it's loaded in the family, I need to place it. So I'm going to go to a view where I can place this rung. Um, I've got, gone to a floor plan view go back to uh, choose component and place it in. Now that I'm in the um, floor plan view, I'll go ahead and align and lock it into place uh, into the center line. So using the align tool, I'm going to um, align it to the center line with the center line of the um, rung component and lock it. And then I'm going to slide it over into place the other direction. Align and lock that one. It's important to uh, lock it into place so it doesn't slide around on you if the width of the ladder changes. Now I'll go back to a front view of the ladder 
and you can see the rung has been placed at the bottom. So go ahead and, and slide it into position. So just kind of slide it up. And then I'm going to place a dimension onto it. Starting from the bottom up and finding the center line of the component and click. So I'll change it to uh, just a round number, one foot off the ground. And here I want to create a label for its spacing. So I'll select the dimension and add the parameter by choosing label in the option bar at the top, pull it down and add the parameter to this dimension. And I'll just call it wrong spacing. And um, I'll make this an instance parameter and hit OK. I made it an instance parameter because if you want the ability to stretch this ladder in height up and down, then um, all the spacing and the height parameters need to be instanced to allow you to do that. So once I've set uh, the spacing for my first rung, I can go ahead and um, array it up. So I'm going to select the item and choose the array button. Once I do, um, you see in the option bar, I have the ability to uh, choose how many copies I need. You only need two copies um, to get this uh, started. You don't really need any more than that. And then um, also you want to make sure group and associate is on. Um, then I'm just going to go up another foot to place my second object. Um, once you do that, a really important step is to align and lock the second object so that it stays centered with the first object. So choosing the align tool, I'm going to choose the center line of the first rung and lock it to the second rung that's been arrayed and lock it into place. Now that it's centered and locked, um, I'm going to dimension uh, the space between these two rungs as well. So from center line to center line, place the dimension, and now I'm going to go ahead and, and give this the um, dimension of that uh, spacing parameter as well. So pulling down the label, I can apply rung spacing to this as well. Now if I change my spacing for this rung, um, the spacing for this second rung will change as well. And any subsequent copies, uh, the spacing will, will change for them as well. So if there end up being three, four, or ten rungs, um, it will know to keep all the spacing the same. So now that the um, rung has been arrayed up and the spacing has been set and they've been locked to their centers, it's time to apply a parameter to the value of the number of copies. To do that, you select the group and you'll see that construction dimension appear, in this case two, because there's just two copies of it. Select that construction dimension by its, by its leader. And when you do in the option bar, you'll see the, the label pull down menu appear again. And here's where you can apply a parameter to that. So go ahead and pull down, add a parameter to that construction dimension. And I'm going to call it number of rungs. I want to make this an instance parameter because I want it to be able to, to freely stretch um, with the height of my ladder and hit OK. And now that I've created a parameter for the number of copies, if I go to my properties button of the component by clicking family types, you can see I've added the parameter here number of rungs and it's two. If I change this here and hit apply, you can see it, it changes the number of copies up. You can leave it like that and manually change the number of copies you want in your component, but most of the time you want that to automatically happen. Um, so you, you tie that back to your family by setting some sort of formula to determine uh, the, the number of copies based on, on the spacing. So I'll go ahead and change that back. And the way you do that is I'm just going to take the height parameter here I have and divide it by my spacing. That'll give me my number of rungs. Um, that that value wants to be. So going back to my properties, under my number of rungs, you'll see a formula field. Here you can add that field. So here I'm just going to add um, the, the parameter height. Make sure it's uh, spelled exactly the same as your parameter. So it's height divided by my, space, my rung spacing. And hit OK. Oh, and you see I didn't spell it right. I forgot to add my space. Once you hit OK, you can see it brings it up. 
Um, I don't want it to go the, the full height, so I'm going to adjust my formula. So it's height minus my rung spacing, or divided by my rung spacing, and then minus one of them so that it brings it back down. So I'll go back into my properties, click in my field. I'll just put a parentheses around here, and then say subtract one, and then hit OK. Once I do that, you can see it's created the number of rungs I want. So finally, we should uh, uh, test the component out by loading it into a project. And one tip before you load it into a project, if you want this um, object's height or length to stretch, uh, there's two things to keep in mind. One is its length or, or height, whatever it is parameter you want to stretch, needs to be an instance parameter. Um, that lets it stretch. Another thing is, the reference plane that's defining that length or height, that needs to be a strong reference or you need to name it, uh, in this case, a top. So you'll know that by selecting the reference plane and seeing its properties, if it's been defined as a reference or at least a strong reference. You need to be able um, to define it as at least a strong reference or, or a top or a side in order for it to recognize it as a handle that you can grab and stretch. Once you have those two things kept in mind, um, we'll go ahead and load it into a project. And I'll place it. And we'll go to a view to see our ladder. And if I select the ladder and pull it up, it should automatically grow. 